what a lovely morning. Morning, America. It is Friday. You're listening to Power Talks, where we try to keep the talk real. The truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth, and we believe that that truth will set you free. You're listening to Power Talks. Good morning, Melody. And good morning to you. Good morning, listeners. It's Friday. It's Groundhog Groundhog Day. Day. (laughs) You know we're not going to be serious today. (laughs) We will. We do have some serious things to talk about. But but I have a poem to share. I have a poem to share. I wrote a poem this morning. You know, I'm not Henry Gibson. Do you remember Henry Gibson? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> but anyway, uh, a little story about uh, Groundhog's Day is you remember Derry Brownfield, my late boss, that uh, it was his favorite holiday, and he used to go on and on and on how Groundhog's Day should be a national holiday, and he was just such a funny guy. Anyway, I wrote a poem this morning because I was thinking of the movie. I remember, didn't you mention the movie that you liked the movie Groundhog's Day? What's the cute me of it? Okay. It's Must cute. have been somebody else. I thought somebody was... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is my uh, Groundhog's Day poem that I wrote in about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's February 2nd, 2008. It's Groundhog's Day. I hope he's not late. It's Groundhog's Day. The old timers say he'll see his shadow and with winter will stay. For his shadow he seems to always see six more cold weeks here and there where you be. It's Groundhog's Day, the same thing goes. The news is the same from D.C., you know. There's corruption here and a dossier there. It's Groundhog's Day. But don't despair. We the people are here, awake from the sleep. For liberty now we must stand and will keep. Oh, D.C. occupiers have hearts that are cold. The economy they wreck, the USA they sold. So you, my friends, on this day and the next, should call Melody Cedarstrom and get your fix. For discount gold and silver trading, you see, will help you secure your personal economy. 1-800-375-4188 on the second day of February 2nd. On February 2nd, 2008. (laughs) 2008? 2018. I'm sorry. I got the wrong. I got the wrong year. Oh, for Pete's sake! I told you I did it really fast. And ten. <laughs> well, it rhymes better with 2008. In, in 2010 plus eight. That's what I did yesterday, <laughs> or the day earlier this week when I did the uh, spoof for the Democrats. But anyway, well, very cute. Forgive me. I'm in the wrong year. <laughs> I'm old. You know. You got to <laughs> But the important part was the end, where where they have to get their fix. You know, they keep saying this dossier, you know, that Hillary Clinton had her fix, the fit, the fit, the uh, uh, FBI had the fix in for Hillary, so everybody can call you and get their fix in and take care of their own economy. Very so that, there you go. But now, I was always thinking of you. Let <laughs> me just tell the listeners this. Prior to the program, we were chatting, and she says, I wrote a poem. And she says, I wrote a poem <laughs> about Groundhog's Day. And a tribute to you. And I'm thinking to myself, Groundhog's Day and a tribute to me. I could not imagine what it might be. Picture the groundhog in flip-flops walking around in the snow. <laughs> and then you've got Melody. <laughs> well, at least in the sand at the beach. But uh, so it, we had a nice little laugh prior to the program. And uh, so we're a little silly now. But uh, we are, uh, we're a lot silly. But anyway, it is Groundhog's Day. And he did see his shadow. Breaking news, breaking news. I think he sees his shadow every year. So we have six more weeks of winter, at least. <laughs> and today in Missouri, we woke up to uh, uh, single digit temperatures. It is cold, baby. It is cold outside. Well, I'm not sure what we have. I was able to walk my dog in flip-flops, so it can't be that cold. It's 34. (laughs) What did I say about the ground dog in (laughs) flip-flops? Actually, I don't walk her. I at least just get her outside. (laughs) Stand on the stoop. Do your business and let's go. Yeah, that's pretty much it. (laughs) But uh, so... uh, Still not a bad day. We're supposed to have a beautiful day. I don't know what our highs are. Sunny, sunny. We were supposed to have here too. So uh, the moon, the moon, the moon has been beautiful, and uh, the past uh, with the with the uh, blue moon. And I didn't see a red moon, but uh, the blue moon is absolutely gorgeous. So. uh, Blue moon. I was singing it. Blue moon. 
I don't remember Do- all the words. <laughs> I have to Google the words. I don't remember all the words. <laughs> Oh, do you think we should move on, or do, should we, we just should move on? Well, let's still. let everyone know it is Open Mic Friday. Let's see how many calls we can get in. So if you call in, keep it as short and brief as you can to the point, 717-300-1218, 717-300-1218. And we also want to hear from new listeners also today. Uh, old and new, and uh, we encourage new folks. Uh, uh, we love to, uh, you know, when we hear from new folks, it kind of gives us an idea of uh, about the program. Um, how far we how, reach how and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, your, your comments are, you know, complimentary comments. Com- when I was in the Girl Scouts, they used to sing, make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver Absolutely. and the other is gold. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so um, yes, so we look forward to it. So what's that number seven, again, Beth? 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. Why don't you have that memorized? Because you say it. Because <laughs> you do. <laughs> I have it written down, and even then I get it wrong sometimes. I write it down. I keep a sheet for every show. Today is show number 124 for us. Oh, my goodness. This time is just flying by. Over 100 days old. (laughs) I'm better than 100 years. But I want to go ahead and talk just a little bit about the markets today. You had a little bit of pressure on gold today, down $12, $1,336. So we had a little bit of a stronger dollar. Silver was down 30 cents today, holding at 17. Platinum was down 12 at 999. But palladium was up $9 at 1,050. And I mentioned the dollar, you're looking up 0.49 at 89.13. Little pressure on oil. Uh, This morning I was up about 3 o'clock, and I don't know why I do this. I turned on Bloomberg to see what the markets were doing. And the Dow was actually down about 120 points in the futures market. And then when I finally uh, started having my coffee this morning, I saw that the futures were down like, you know, over 200, um, uh, closer to 300. So a big drop from the middle of the night to uh, the opening. Uh, But they did reverse themselves somewhat. I'm still showing the Dow holding around 200 uh, to the downside, and the S&P is down a couple points. The NASDAQ was down 25. So we'll see how the end of the day uh, with the metals. But the big news today was that the, uh, well, it was big news for a while, and uh, but the uh, January jobs report came out today, and they showed uh, growth uh, uh, non-farm payrolls rose by 200,000 in January, beating analyst estimates. Now, remember on Wednesday, I said the ADP came out and they had 234,000, uh, and I figured government would be lower. <laughs> Here they are lower. And uh, so more importantly... I'm good. You're more good. importantly, more importantly, average hourly earnings increased three percent on an annualized basis. Um, there's been a lot of uh, minimum wage increases and, and uh, so forth. I don't know if that has the impact of having a three percent. You have the stock markets uh, rising, uh, but I think three percent when you're having basically nothing. Um, okay, I don't know where it's coming from, but. Uh, um, but this is the uh, the the unemployment rate was 4.1 percent, and um, let's see what else. If there's any other interesting news in that report, uh, didn't have much impact though on the on the stock market with the reversal. But when you look at January at 200,000, uh, that takes us back to about July of last year where we had 190,000 August we had 221 and then there was a big drop to 14,000 so tell me what that was all about mm. and then all of a sudden we started having uh 271 260 uh 160 and we came back a little bit this year or this month in January so uh, I'm not sure what it all means, and um, construction reported by the, the biggest gain by sector with 36,000, bars and restaurants added 31,000, healthcare was up 21,000, manufacturing showed a gain of 15,000, and durable goods related industries added 18,000. So, um, let's see. 
Well, this is interesting. While the labor force participation rate held steady at 62.7%, those counted as not in the labor force popped, jumping 153 thousand to ninety five point seven so when you see that pop and these are people who just leave the market force they give up hope uh, you know maybe I don't know if retirement would actually have I gonna say throw in the towel and retire early or something yeah but that's still a big jump and uh, and still see that type of gain of two hundred thousand because uh, if those are retirees that means those jobs opened up and were replaced so I don't that's know true. Sometimes you just get these mixed reports, and, uh, of course, there's always revisions to everything. And I'm not sure they show any revisions from December. Um, the November gain of 252000 was cut to 216 mm-hmm. So they did revise them all downward. And... Okay. Um, Let's see. So, um, you know, we just uh, that kind of watch and analyze it. You know, I I still get a big kick out of uh, several years ago when the Democrats were really, really pushing. And I think, uh, well, I know it was President Barack Obama was still in the White House. They were really, really pushing for this minimum wage hike, and they were really, really pushing uh, for uh, extensions on uh, unemployment and. Uh, Bernie Sanders got angry at one of the uh, – somebody was asking him a question, and he's throwing up his arms. You don't have any idea how many people are out of work. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, maybe we ought to be doing something about that. <laughs> exactly. But I just want to revise, I want to revise something here. Okay. The, Dow, the Dow is now down 314 points. Today? Now. Yeah, currently. Right yes. this minute. Cool. Right this minute. So right this minute. Uh, there, was a big, are, there was a big drop. The NASDAQ is down 80 points, and the S&P is down 30. So the markets are continuing to decline. The Dow is dropping below that uh, 226,000 uh, mark. And um, so, you know, we have this going on with the president about the memo. That does, <laughs> not, that does not provide confidence. Uh, that 10-year yield, 2.84%. Folks, you know, I've been telling you, 2.60. You're going to see it come undone. And this is exactly what's been going on. Bill Gross, he revised his figure to 3%. And 3% has been a long time um, uh, yield for the 10-year to where things would begin to unravel. He he changed it upward after the 2.60 because he just wasn't strong enough to keep that. He was probably getting too much pressure to keep the 2.6.0 percent. But I agreed with the 2.60 percent, and it's getting over the 2.84 percent on the 10-year yield. Markets are going to come undone if it continues that trend to rise. Lord knows what will happen when it does get to three. And uh, so these are signs that are telling you. Uh, these are coming undone, and with what's going on in Washington, the confidence. It, well, regardless it, it, of what comes out in this dossier, um, and I don't, you know, they've been making it, it's got a lot of hype, and they've been making it up to be a big deal, and I don't doubt that it's going to reveal a lot, but they've been talking about it for months and months and months. So is there anything going to be new in it? I've got something here. And we're going into a break, so I'm going to wait till we come back. But it says that there's a GOP rep who read the memo, and he's dropped a huge hint, huge, huge hint about what's in it. And I was reading it. I go, well, that's not new. Anyway, I want to share that when we come back because I think it's just telling that how much they just keep talking. You're listening to Power Talks. It is Open Mic Friday, 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. And happy ground all day to you. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. 
Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann. We were having a show while we were on the break. We were just really going at it. (laughs) No, we were not. We were going at it. We weren't arguing. We were just having a great discussion. It was. I didn't mean we don't argue. No, we don't. We don't argue. We giggle a lot, but we don't argue. Well, this this little report that I got, and, you know, I thought, oh, I've got to read this because it's something new. Well, it's not new, and it's kind of like Groundhog's Day. It's the same thing over and over and over again. He always sees his shadow. Do you ever remember when he didn't see his shadow? <laughs> I'll, have to pull, I'll have to pull up the news. I'll I know it. that once in a while, but it. usually he sees his shadow. <laughs> anyway, this is the Republican South Carolina Representative Jeff Duncan. And he read the FISA memo and says that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton could, should be scared of its comments, its contents. Now, that's what he's actually revealing. But we've known this all along that it might implicate, uh, and we know it implicates the DO, the, the Democrat National Committee, and we know it implicates and talks about Hillary Clinton. But Barack Obama, I, I have suspected, because it all happened under his administration. And we know he had to have been knowledgeable of what was going on. But Melody is right. We were talking about the FISA uh, when we were on the break because it's just been – it's only been about four weeks ago, maybe a little bit more than that, um, that uh, that uh, Congress went ahead and passed the FISA again. They fa- passed that law one more time. They keep keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, and yet this is what they're complaining about. And now however, it's in their backyard. However, this FISA was received on phony information, not just that it was phony, but it was set up phony. They did. They went to a lot of pains to set this up, Melody, and to make it, you know, sort of kind of believable. And uh, and then they got these warrants so that they could spy at least on two people we know that they spied on. And... Uh, <clears throat> As as we were talking about Rand Paul yesterday, and he's telling uh, uh, Colbert, which I'm not sure why you would even try to logic with Colbert, you know, 
the Excuse seriousness. My language. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and you gentlemen. You said ass twat. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, lady. Oh, that one slipped. <laughs> anyway, yeah, move um, on, please. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Rand Paul was explaining to him that they can tape your conversations. Cause I know Rand Paul was against this FISA. You can you can tape this. Uh, any uh, conversation or read any email, they could go back and get this from a long time ago, and they're doing it on anybody. And they can make anybody out to be a liar. Do you remember what you typed two weeks ago, more or less, you know, two years ago? Uh, do you remember what you typed or what you said? I wouldn't be able to. I can't even remember what I said in this hour from the, <laughs> to the next hour. It's I like, do. You, know, you remember what I said? I remember, yeah. You remember, Okay. I best be careful then. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to go get a face on me. Anyway, so uh, it's uh, – they still have way too much power. That's the bottom line. I, uh, um, You know, Alan Dershowitz was saying that they made a mistake. The Founding Fathers made a mistake a long time ago to combine some of these. They should have been completely separate because now that's how this is all working together. And uh, I don't know, um, FBI wasn't around when the Founding Fathers were putting things together. But anyway, <laughs> the FBI is corrupt. Not all of them are corrupt, but the ones at the top, they have definitely uh, got an agenda. And uh, so do many others in Congress. You know, uh, President Donald Trump was speaking before the GOP yesterday, and he was talking about the, the – the Democrats who are AOL, you know, March 5th is the deadline again on this DACA, and they have done nothing. I mean, they have they have dug their feet in the ground, and they ain't moving. <laughs> He's offered them more, they said, uh, uh, than what uh, Barack Obama had offered uh, before. But I don't know if that's totally and completely true. Maybe a number of people it might be, but uh, uh, they don't want to build the wall. They don't want to do a chain migrate do do away with chain migration, and they don't want to do away with uh, the lottery uh, uh, visas. So they've uh, dug in, and they're not going to move. And, um, you know, it's going to be all kinds of chaos and stupidness being said come March 5th <laughs> and up until then. Yeah, I know. There's just so many things, and it's just just like it's it's um, like Groundhog's Day. It is. We're just on and on and on the same thing over and over and over again. And at least he learned. He became an accomplished pianist. <laughs> at least he learned something. <laughs> I don't think we're learning anything. But um, so yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting. And um, uh, if they're going to release the memo, I just wish they would. I saw somebody, they sent some kind of a mem or uh, what do they call it, a GIF, where they have the silly little video that's silent, and they sent that around on Twitter, and he's sitting there, and he's just waiting, and he's blinking his eyes. He goes, they're going to wait till 5 o'clock today, aren't they? They're going to wait till 5 p.m. <laughs> on a day today where the markets are down 300 points, and I did see that they were coming back a little bit. Yeah, they will wait till 5 o'clock. Usually any type of, yeah, any bad news they will release, uh, you know, after after the markets are closed. Any day. Know, to, for those who haven't been paying attention and they were all of a sudden realize how corrupt um, – this uh, governing is, <laughs> and uh, I think it could dampen the uh, the hope that people have, the spirits that we have, that things are going to get better because it's going to look pretty bad. I I think it's going to look pretty bad. It all does look pretty bad, but you and I are following it. There's a lot of people that aren't, and when it comes out, they're going to go, oh, oh, really? They what? <laughs> And that's so, the that people don't know, but and we really don't know the fallout of all this, how it will actually impact. Uh, if it, if it is bad as what they're letting on, and of course you know they always make mountains out of molehills. Sometimes they do um, for political reasons, for you know talk. Um, if it is as bad or or even half as bad as what they're letting on, it it could be devastating to this nation for a little bit. Yes. Yes. So, and uh, we're already, and you know, there's there's just so much, you know, anger, you know, with 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 you know the, the 
part of the the people in this country and so forth. It's it's uh, yeah, you know, I, I really don't know. I, I, well, you know, and and in that in that conversation with Rand Paul and Colbert, Colbert says, "Well, it has to do with Russia. Then lock me up." You know. Yeah. That's all they care about is locking up the president. They don't even care if anything's true. They don't care. Well, if they did it to them, they can do it to you. They don't understand the the uh, issue of liberty. That's very true. They do not get it because they're living in socialism. Mm-hmm. That's where their minds are. So this the, well, I'm going to mention this and then we'll go on. But this is talking about the three. Uh, the three Gates lawyers that quit, um, they think that might mean that uh, uh, that they are cooperating with Mueller. Well, you might have to define cooperating because with this FBI, uh, I'm sorry, with this memo coming out, the cooperation may be getting switched around a little bit. Listen here, you know, <laughs> so, I thought those lawyers may be jumping ship for another reason rather than cooperation. They may, you know what, we ain't touching this one with a 10-foot pole. We're out of here. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to be out there save, trying to save their own necks. So you're going to have everybody jumping ship, flipping ships. And, <laughs> it's gonna be, you can't write novels. You can't write, I mean, this You is, cannot. Uh, I mean, you cannot write spy <laughs> novels. Jason Bourne wasn't this confusing. <laughs> How many movies did it take to tell that man's story? <laughs> you know, here's here's something that I think really is under the, um, I don't know, it, it, it's not to be concentrated on. I, I just saw the headline and I, you know, and. You can't compare it to Chicago or Baltimore or anything like that. But Puerto Rico has reported 78 killings in one of the deadliest months. I mean, that that, that they Puerto Rico has been devastated with a hurricane and very little reporting on how they're coming back. I, and, and I just saw this headline and I thought to myself, I don't even know if all the power is back on in that country or not. You've had a mass... Uh, um, Masses of people have been leaving Puerto Rico since the hurricane, leaving behind who knows what. But but it's – pardon? I was just repeating what you said, who knows what. One of Puerto Rico's deadliest months, uh, clear, 78 killings in January. Uh, they've The surge in violent crime, growing discontent among thousands of police officers. Um, so it's roughly a kill, 20 – Killings per 100,000 residents. Compared, wow. Compared with 3.7 per 100,000 residents on the U.S. mainland. And um, these are mainly young men. Uh, the majority of people killed last month were young men, but they're not, you know, it's just not limited to the, to the young men. And um, so they really don't seem to be giving, we know that the, the country is in debt. Um, it's, um, so it's, uh, the country is, the, the government is corrupt. Um, they bankrupted the, the, the island. Yes. And, um, so. They were even taking things when we were sending them over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the magistrates. Yeah. The dons, the dons. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. I mean, we're talking about Puerto Rico. I don't know if there's anything really new, but it should be new, uh, just because of um, you know we think that we should be a little bit further along mm -hmm. than. Um, but hey, you have a corrupt government. We see it everywhere. That the countries do not fare well. No, they don't. Um, we're going to go to. The can I bring it back to this country? Look yes, and we're headed that direction. Yeah, we are headed that direction. Let's go to the phone lines. We have Oscar on the uh, on the line. Oscar, how are you today? Good morning, ladies. How are you today? Good we are morning. good. It's a happy uh, ground day. Beautiful day here, uh, day here in North Carolina. Well, uh, I have a couple of comments that I'd like to uh, make. First, uh, judging uh, by the looks of uh, some of the Democrats the other day, Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, uh, President Donald Trump was talking, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, and she was, uh, she was disgusting. And uh, Mr. Chuck Schumer, he was trying to bury himself down in his chair. He, he looked 
looked like almost he was attending a meeting at the synagogue, at the synagogue of Satan, I would say, because he looked so evil. Mm. And, jeez. Uh, Anyhow, uh, the other comment I want to make is as far as the, uh, this migration thing with this uh, dreamers and everything, you know. I mean, this is totally unfair to those of us that we came here years ago, and we have to go through the protocol, do everything that, it, that they had to be done at the time in order to obtain our papers. You know, I had to, in, in my case, I know this very well because it, it touches me directly. I had to get a lawyer. I had to go back to my country of origin uh, to pick up my, my visa in, the, in the, uh, the country of origin. And, uh, you know, that all demands a lot of money. Pay the lawyer, pay the trip. And come mm. back here, and I, I had to stay down there for all, almost two months because some papers were delayed. So what happened? You know, these people get everything in a silver platter with a silver spoon. You know, and and, and it's being pushed by these liberal, liberals, you know, Democrats, and it's all a political Ponzi scheme, if you may, because. I, I want to ask anybody if these people would really do care any little thing about these people. They don't even care about the American people, let alone they're going to care about the foreigners. It's all political because they know if these people get visas and get their legal status straightened up, they're going to turn around and vote for them because that's what they're looking to consolidate their power. And that's all. They don't care nothing about the country. They don't care anything about you and I and, and everybody else. It's all a Ponzi scheme. And uh, this is all I have to say. I'm just going to get off the air and so okay. I can let somebody else call and give uh -huh. their opinion. Meanwhile, thank oh. you very much for letting me talk and have a lovely day, ladies. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, thank you Oscar. I appreciate you it too. so much. You know, I do have an article here from the Daily Signal that is it's actually listing why the left wants more and more immigrants. And the very first thing they say here is for the votes. An estimated 70 to 80 percent of Latin American immigrants will vote Democrat. It's that conservatives and Republicans are fooling themselves when they argue that the Latin Americans are social conservatives because they oppose abortion for the most part and they support a strong nuclear family. But it says Latin Americans are overwhelmingly politically left and they vote accordingly. They, uh, he said, think about Latin America Pope Francis believes about his government small militaries and the social welfare state and his his contempt of capitalism and when you stop and think about their origin of what they really believe you can see you know that they vote they're going to vote on the left it is it gives us the second reason for the left support for virtually unlimited immigration is that one of the most enduring tenets of the left which was Karl Marx, to the present-day Democrat Party and left-wing parties in Western Europe, is that the nation-state is an anachronism. And how you say that? Anachronism. The American left doesn't believe in America, just as the English left doesn't believe in England. Now, you stop and think about it. Think about what the Democrats found offensive the other night. When they got up and talked to later... They mentioned God. <laughs> they shouldn't mention God, faith, and family. And, you know, the things that are American, we used to consider all American, they were against. They didn't want you. It was offensive. The national anthem was offensive. Everything. And it says here that the third reason is the power of feeling about uh, good about oneself. It would be difficult to overstate the significance of feeling good about oneself as a primary factor in why people adopt left-wing policies. It says those who support bestowing American citizenship on the children of illegal immigrants, the so-called dreamers, based on it, you think about this, it's their emotions, it's their feelings, based on never past proposal in Congress called the DREAM Act, feel free, good, and about themselves. They are the compassionate and progressive and enlightened. They're the ones that have all the passion, and we're the ones that are just heartless, Melody. We're just heartless, you know, that we think that, the, you know, we, that we ought to have a little say about who comes in the door at our house. It says, if 
if any one of these reasons accurately describes the and there were several more there I, I just kind of skipped around um, to explain those different ones that I read it says if any one of these reasons accurately describes the left's attitude toward America and immigration America is headed for trouble if all three are accurate America is headed for an an extensual crisis and I believe we're not headed there. I think we're already there. I agree. I agree. And, you know, back to Oscar, how hard he was, but he was persistent. He knew what he wanted. They did what they did to do it legally. It always baffles me when you talk to the other I hate to say the other side, but when you talk to a Democrat. But that's what it is. But when you talk to a Democrat and and they just they think there's – a different definition for illegal. Well, you know, illegal, yes, but, you know, <laughs> it's like, no, what don't you understand? Why is it so bad to want to have something done legally? We're not saying they can't come here. We're just saying come here legally. Do it the and right they way. they just can't, they can't grasp. That concept, even if they would say, well, I agree, let's take care of this problem and make sure that no one gets in unless it's legal. I could deal with that, but no, they don't. They want to argue what the word illegal means. Oh, well, sometimes it just doesn't apply. Excuse me? <laughs> what part of illegal would not apply? And they, they want America to have this vision of all these children. And yes. then how cruel we are to these children. We have no and we're, break, we're breaking up families. And it goes on and on and on. And while there might be a few of those cases, that is not the majority of these cases. Oh. And for them to sit there and disrespect those two families who lost their daughters to the um, what do they call it, MS-13 gang, Brutally. I almost thought it was cruel, but the families had um, had uh, obviously agreed to the interview with Laura Ingram last night. And she asked them to explain what happened to their daughters. They were beaten with baseball bats and they were raped. It was brutal. Absolutely brutal. And the Democrats sat there on their hands, ignoring the loss of these two innocent young girls to this gang, where their motto is to rape and kill. That's, all, that's what they live for. And they are in, I think they said, 40-some states of this nation, where they have these gangs set up. And they're killing, mostly they're killing the... Uh, their own and yet we're the ones that are cruel because we want to stop the killing and the raping we want to stop the drugs coming in because some of them are doing that we want to stop the the human trafficking because they do participate in that but we're the ones who are cruel um i know that they do politicize i do understand that but it is going on in this nation and it is it is horrible absolutely horrible and uh, I agree with Oscar the behavior of the Democrats was absolutely disgusting and I believe all America saw it now there's going to be those who could care less that they're so so in they're so, so focused on up, Trump no they're, they're so, so focused filled with hate yeah. yep but why do they hate Trump they don't hate him for his language because their language is worse they don't hate him because they think he uh uh messed around with women because they all do that they don't hate him for those reasons they hate him because he wants to make america great again and it's getting into their pockets it's i don't think they hate him for that i think they hate him because they're he afraid one of them. <laughs> no no not at all i because i think they're afraid that he's going to expose them it exposes them and i hope he does and 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 it's their own behavior that truly is, <laughs> that is exposing them. 
Well, last I mean, there was a, there was an old saying. I'll tell you what. When I was a young, if looks could kill, <laughs> would have been dead. I would have been dead. And uh, certainly, that's what exactly what we saw uh, the other night. And um, but you know, Oscar was talking about how the difficult time he had getting here. And and you know, and do we loosen um, the um, I think we need to look at it. Do we need I to loosen need, in order to I, become a citizen and to come into this country? Do we? I, I do definitely we think we should look at it. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. No, I agree. I mean, that was my question. Do we? Do we? Do we change it? I think we need to take a look at it. I don't think we need to make it easy peasy, but I think we need to take a look at it and make it a little less red tape. Why should it take 11 or 12 years? That's ridiculous. Let's just get. You know, get it done. If you've already vetted them, then let's get it done, you know. And uh, I do think the vetting needs to take place. Uh, but, yeah, let's let's, ma- let's take a look at it and see why it is so difficult. But we don't need people just walking across the borders and saying, and then they stand and they protest, you know, you owe us this, you're doing this, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know what, go home. If you don't like it here, Go back across that border. That's the way I feel about it. We have Joe in Arkansas. Joe, can you lighten it up a bit for us? <laughs> well, I had a couple of items I wanted to talk talk, talk about today. And uh, number one, uh, when I heard you talking about uh, how things are in Puerto Rico, you know, it uh, sounds to me like that's an example of how people can mess up the most ideal situation in the world. You know, when I think about hey, Puerto Joe. Rico. Hey, Joe. Joe, yeah. no, hang on. Hang on. Okay. I was mistaken. I didn't look at the clock when I brought you on. So you hang on, and we'll we'll talk about Puerto Rico. Okay, and your other I can do that. When we come back. Thank you, Joe. You're listening to Power Talks. It is Open Mic Friday. It is also Groundhog Day. 717-300-1218. That's 717-300-1218. Melody, Beth Ann, Joe. We'll be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you 
do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth, and we're in the final segment of today's show, and we were just getting on with, with uh, we, I just brought on uh, Joe, and the music started. I apologize, Joe, that that was my fault. So let's get back to, you. Uh, you were talking about Puerto Rico. Yeah, no big deal. That's the nature of radio. Okay, um, Puerto Rico sounds to me like an uh, example of how people can mess up what would seem to be an ideal situation. You know, Puerto Rico is a tropical island, and when I think about it, you know, here shivering in the cold here in Arkansas, I think about how Puerto Rico is a tropical island, you know, and uh, so it never really gets cold there, so that they really don't need much in the way of buildings and shelter, and they would be able to grow all kinds of wonderful tropical crops. They would be able to grow mangoes and avocados and papayas and all kinds of wonderful tropical Making fruits hungry. and nuts, probably, and vegetables, and then they're surrounded by the ocean there, so they must have a lot of good fishing there. And so, you know, you would think it would be kind of an ideal place to live, something of a paradise, and, uh, you know, and with about the only, you know, really natural problem that they would have would be the hurricanes. You know, the hurricanes do come in sometimes. There was that line in West Side Story where Anita sang about Puerto Rico. She said, uh, always the hurricanes blowing. So apparently they get a lot of hurricanes there. So you'd think they would be prepared for hurricanes. But, um, but you know, but basically it seems like it's a wonderful, you know, almost paradise type of, type of situation being a tropical island, you know, with good fishing and good crop growing and all kinds of stuff like that. And if the people were... Uh, honest and good with each other, and if they worked hard to produce uh, what they can from their situation, you know, you'd think they would have an absolutely wonderful life. But somehow, you know, it seems like people can take an ideal situation like that and find ways to mess it up, apparently. <laughs> and well, it's kind of like Venezuela. Venezuela should be rich and doing well, but look at them. And California, too. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember Woody Guthrie sang a song about California. He said, uh, California is a garden of Eden, a paradise to live in our sea, but believe it or not, you won't find it so hot if you ain't got the do re me. All right. But, um, well, that, I think that goes to show what uh, the corruption and greed at the top does, you know, when you've got uh, those that are in charge that are doing that. So what was your other comment today? Yeah, on immigration, you know, it seems like where the United States has maybe kind of failed is not exporting, you know, the idea, the founding ideas of America so well to the rest of the world, you know, so that the rest of the world can be more like America, can be becoming more like America, so there's not so much demand for people from other parts of the world to come to America. You know, the United States started out with the wonderful wisdom of the founding fathers and our wonderful constitutional system and bill of rights and so on like that. And that made the quality of life here so good, you know, so that people from all over the world wanted to come here. And I think the United States is very, very, very tarnished and decayed from what it used to be. But still, apparently, there's enough left of what the founding fathers originally gave us, you know, that people from all over the world still want to come here because apparently it's the cleanest dirty shirt in the drawer. And, uh, and, and, and so, so it seems to me what the United States has not done such a good job of is ex- exporting, you know, especially in recent times when the schools have been so Marxist oriented and so globalist. Um, you know, America is what America, instead of trying so much to increase immigration and make it easier to immigrate, you know, it seems like if America would do a better job of trying to infect the world with the ideas that founded us, you know, infect the idea, infect the world with the ideas of the founding fathers and of our constitution and our bill of rights and so on like that. So the life in those other countries would become a lot more prosperous and freer and better, you know, so there wouldn't be so much demand and pressure for the, for people to come to the United States, you know, because, well, you know, we just can't take in the whole rest of the world. So that seems to me what we ought to be thinking about is how can we, you know, get the world to become more like the United States was in the beginning rather than how to bring the whole world into the United States. Well, I agree, and I love that comment about the cleanest, the cleanest dirty shirt in the drawer. <laughs> but it's, you know, because it's uh, they still went over here, you know, and then they come in and they demand what would happen if you and I went 
uh, to their country or another country and started making all, all kinds of demands. We want this. We want that. I, I don't think we'd be welcome there very long. I think we'd be deported or put in prison right away. I think, well, in, in uh, Mexico, they definitely throw you in prison and throw away the key, as they used to say. Um, we like to never got our little Marine back when he crossed the border over there. And uh, and he was not very well treated either. So. And, it's the, and it seems to me the third world country has been enforced their borders the most. You know, it seems like, you're, you, know, you know, the whole so-called developed world, free world, whatever you call it, you know, Western Europe and everything like that, they seem to have kind of gone to the same direction as the United States, maybe even more so, and letting in people from all over the world and, you know, having the borders wide open. And it seems like it's the uh, third world countries that seem to be the that doing the best job of being more nationalistic and guarding the borders and, and protecting their <laughs> own culture and their own national tradition. Mm. Yeah, be it as it may be. Well, I, pr- I appreciate the call. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate the call. Have okay, thank weekend. you. Bye. All right. And we have Bill from Arizona. Melody, you still with me? You've been awful quiet. Yes, I am. Bill. Just, just listening. Just <laughs> we have, listening. We have Bill from Arizona. Good morning, Good morning. Bill. Uh, we need to remember that uh, that the American colonists were infected with the ideas of freedom by by plastic liberals over in Great Britain before they came here. Uh, beyond that, uh, this morning before you came on the air, uh, of course I had a shortwave on before you actually ran your your uh, sign on. And usually I would hear Bob Martin signing off his challenge show. This morning, apparently somebody flipped the wrong switches at WWCR, which is altogether too common there. And uh, they actually had somebody reading the memo this morning before you came on the air. And the most most encouraging, the most encouraging part about that was that when they read the title of the memo and the preface of the memo, they actually used the word treason. Treason? Somebody committed treason? Well, you know, maybe if they actually investigate treason, they might discover that somebody did commit treason. And if we're going to worry about being cruel to all of these children, maybe we should be worried about more about the cruelty that we're committing when we have doctors with arms and legs and heads off of pre preborn mm-hmm. children and drag them out of their I mother's agree. wombs and throw them away like garbage. I agree. Of course, course, uh, course, of course, you know. And and the graphic, the graphic for that is on on, is on the internet, but nobody wants to see it. Huh. Well, no, I've watched it. I mean, I don't watch it all, but I know, and uh, I talk against that all the time. And yes, we need to end it. No nation ever survived by killing its futures. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it so much. I hadn't heard. We need to take. We need to uh, prosecute people for murder. If we're going Absolutely. to stop that. I agree. I agree. All right. Thank you, Bill. That's, you know, what graphic. It is graphic. It is very, very graphic. And with, you know, just getting two new grandchildren, and I have a great-grandchild on the way very shortly, and uh, it's, uh, you know, you hold that little life in your arms, and you watch them grow, and their first smiles, and, and all this, and how can they just be so cruel? as to uh, say that it's the right of the mother to to get rid of the tissue. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to look real quick to see if that memo has actually I, I did, been released. I don't see, they might have been reading something else, but I don't think at this point in time the memo it has it was the been actual released. Memo. It wasn't the actual memo. Okay. Uh, there, but, I know, we, be I know there have been... They used the word treason in it. But I, I know there have been some, uh, I, I, you know similar copies or maybe parts of it or something like that that have been floating around and so forth but i don't think the quote unquote actual uh memo has been released as yet okay well we're down to about a minute here girl you want to wind it up you want me to read the poem again you want me to read the poem? <laughs> <laughs> that'll be my advertisement folks for the for the day the great That's day the, la- the last uh, let me over. let me get the last paragraph out just All right, for you okay. I, i've even fixed it uh, D.C. occupiers have the hearts that are cold, the economy they wrecked, the USA they sold. So you, my friends, on this day and the next shall call Melody, should call Melody Cedarstrom and get you your fix. 
for discount gold and silver trading you see will help you secure your personal economy. 1-800-375-4188 on this second day of February 2000 plus 10 and then plus 8. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> well, you, didn't, you, you didn't start from the beginning. I didn't. We didn't have time. Oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't have time for the beginning. I was giving you your plug. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate it deeply, and I appreciate the listeners and our customers at Discount Gold and Silver Trading. So we're out until Monday. Happy Groundhog's Day. Pay no attention to that groundhog. Spring is on the way. <laughs> have a good one, Melody. You, you too. too. Alrighty, bye-bye. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built, that's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit discountgoldandsilvertrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.